And everybody said, Solution is going to increase. Power is going to increase. Wonders of wonders in your life. Somebody there will have a testimony. You will have a testimony in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for this day. A new day. The day of sunshine. And the day of power. And the day of glory. And the day of miracle. And the day of final solution for everyone. We're asking, Lord, that this morning, every prayer that is preached by every one of your children will be answered in Jesus' name. Joy in every heart. Happiness in every soul. Health in everyone. Lord, I pray abundant life will be ours today one by one in Jesus' name. Confirm it in every life. In Jesus' name we pray. We're coming to John chapter 10, verse 10. Abundant life in Jesus. John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have each more abundantly. You'll find that verse divided into two parts. Number one, the coming of the thief. Number two, the coming of the Messiah, of the Christ, of the shepherd of the savior, of the healer, of the provider. And it says, when the devil comes, the thief, he comes for just one reason, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And then Christ said, I am come. Christ is here this morning. And what has he come to do? He comes to restore everything the devil has stolen from your life. The devil came to steal. He said, now, look at him. I am come. And he has come to restore every good thing the devil has stolen away from your life in Jesus' name. And he says, he has come to kill. But he said, I am come to bring life where there is death. Spiritual death canceled. Physical premature death canceled. And the deadness of any part of your life or family canceled in Jesus' name. The devil came to kill. He has come to bring life. He's come to bring eternal life. He's come to bring victorious life. He's come to bring abundant life. And then he said, he came to destroy. To destroy lives. And to destroy progress and prospects. And to destroy anything and everything that is good and jesus said he has come now to deliver you from the hand of the destroyer i am delivered if you believe it say it i am delivered and the destroyer will not have the final say in your life in jesus name abundant Life in Jesus. Whenever Jesus comes to anyone, and that one looks at Jesus 
and accepts what Jesus has come to bring, he doesn't give his blessings in trickles, small, small beads, in low level. Everything he gives, he always makes it abundant. You will touch him this morning. And you will discover by yourself, whatever he gives, he doesn't give in trickles, in small, small beads. He gives in abundance. Abundance has come to your life. In Second Corinthians chapter 4, reading from verse 15. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. Abundant. Somebody help me shout abundant. Abundant grace, abundant mercy, abundant love, abundant life, abundant joy, abundant blessing, abundant power, abundant supernatural supply. Everything that comes from him comes in an abundant measure. And when you pray, you will pray. When you pray, the answer will be abundant. Look at Ephesians chapter 3, reading from verse 20. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Now unto him that is able and so happy that there is nothing you demand from the Lord today that God will say like Elijah, because God is greater than Elijah, is the creator of Elijah. God cannot say, you have asked a hard thing. Our God is able. Men in the world may be unable, our God is able. You personally may be unable, our God is able. And all the helpers that try to help you may not be able to help you after all, but our God is able. Somebody help me shout a good amen. amen. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church. God is going to have the glory in your life today. Yeah. Testimony, there'll be glory to God. By Christ Jesus, throughout all ages, world, without end, and somebody said, Amen. Abundant life in Jesus. Number one, eternal life in Christ. It starts by giving us eternal life. Number two, victorious life through Christ. He gives us the victory. And once he gives us eternal life, everlasting life, Christ's own life, God's own kind of life, eternal, everlasting, unending, then he continues and gives us the victory every day. Victory every day. You will have victory. Victory, victorious life through Christ. Number three, abundant life in Christ. Abundant life in Christ. Am I looking at anybody there? Who am I looking at? You are the man. You are the woman. Forget the past. I said forget the past. Abundance has come in your life today in Jesus' name. Number one, eternal life through 
Christ. Look at Romans chapter 6, reading from verse 22 and verse 23. Romans chapter 6, verse 22. But now, being made free, he has freedom. And he will give you that freedom. He didn't need the freedom for himself. He was always free. And Satan could not touch him. The prince of this world cometh. And he has nothing in, in me. He had never been bound. He had never been sick. He had never been sinful. He had never had any yoke. And if he has any freedom at all, that freedom he purchased for you, you're free. Now, being made free from sin and from all the consequences of sin, it says in verse 22, and become servants to God, ye have, I have, ye have, I have, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. That's what you have at the present time. In the present day, it's not what you are going to have. You have it already. Verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God, you don't pay for this one, is free for everyone. Like the air you breathe is free. And whether you are rich or poor, the air is free for you. You couldn't pay for it if you wanted to. Whether you are educated or not so educated, the air you breathe is free. A gift. And the water you drink. And the ground you walk upon. Free. As free as the air that the Almighty God supplies to you. As free as the ground on which you walk, given by the Lord. It says, the gift of God is eternal life. And today, everyone that needs, that wants to receive that eternal life, you will have as a gift. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. That's the only way you can have that gift, through Jesus Christ. Because he died to purchase that for you. And you are telling the Lord today, everything you paid for at Calvary, my eternal life, the life of God in man, the life that takes me from this earthly life and takes me to everlasting life up above, coming as a gift from you. I need, I request, I demand, I desire, I receive. You will receive in Jesus' name. Remember that eternal life, always free, always available. And whosoever will call on the name of the Lord, that eternal life you will have. Titus chapter 3 from verse 5. Titus chapter 3 verse 5. Not by the works of righteousness which we have done. Whatever good thing you have done, that's good. It helps your neighbor. It feeds the hungry. It refreshes those who are tired and weary in life. That's good, but as good as those good works were, they couldn't purchase eternal life. All the good you do before coming to Christ, they are as based. They're coming from the earth. Even if you pile them up, they cannot reach into the heavens. 
and they are not great enough, they are not good enough, they are not godly enough to purchase eternal life. That's why it says, not by the works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy. Mercy goes beyond your own natural works. He saved us by the washing of regeneration. And then it says the renewing of the Holy Ghost. Look at what it does when it saves us. One, he saved us. He will save everyone that needs salvation. By the washing of regeneration, he washes us. But in that washing, in that cleansing, we're regenerated. Generate, regenerate. That means you are born all over again. You are renewed all over again. Only the washing from heaven could do that. Your own natural washing cannot do that. That's why as a wash today, when you are washing tomorrow, you see dirt again coming out. The natural man, the natural cell produces dirt. But the washing of regeneration, he recreates us. You'll be a new creature. And then he said, by re the renewing of the Holy Ghost, it's not the renewing of the human spirit, by the human spirit, it's the Holy Spirit himself that brings the renewal, which is shed on us, tell me the next word there, abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. He sheds it on us. He pours it on us. He gives us graciously. And he gives us freely. And we don't have to say, it's not enough. My cup is not full yet. It will be overflowing. <laughs> that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life eternal life that's what he gives eternal life in Christ in first John first John chapter 5 reading from verse 13 these things I have written unto you that believe in the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. That ye may know. He wants you to know. He doesn't want you to be wondering or to be guessing. Do I have eternal life? Don't I have, have eternal life? Am I sure of eternal life? Is he going to give me eternal life? He said, all that were reading, the Holy Spirit has led the apostles to write that you may know for a certainty that you have eternal life. In yourself, you have eternal death. But you turn away from yourself and you turn to Christ your Savior. And he has said, Whosoever comes to me, I will in no wise cast off. He will not push you away. He will say, Come, come. I'll be waiting for you. I died for you. And if you will come, and you'll not think of religion, church, work, education, I'm a boy, I'm a girl. I'm a man, I'm a woman. If you don't think of anything earthly, and you know that the grace of God is available for everyone, you turn away from your sin, you turn to Christ, eternal life must be your possession. And the Spirit of God will be a witness in your heart that you have 
eternal life. I have eternal life. Satan cannot touch that eternal life. I have eternal life. Men or women cannot take away that eternal life. I have eternal life. Anyone on earth less than God cannot tamper with that eternal life. I have eternal life. Say it now. Number two, victorious life through Christ. When you come to Christ, when anyone comes to Christ, Christ does not reproduce weakness. He doesn't say, hey, come to me. I'll make you weak. I'll keep you weak. I'll sustain your weakness. Come to me and I will make you have defeat. Never. When we come to Christ, he maintains victory in our lives. And the moment he gives you eternal life, he continues to watch over you. So that as he watches over you, that eternal life will be maintained every day and every moment. And you will have the victory. And I will have the victory. There were things that defeated you before you came to Christ. Before you had eternal life, heavenly life. The life of God in man, the life of Christ in man, and the life regenerated and renewed by the Holy Ghost. Before that time, you were weak, anemic, every little thing will push you down. Every little sin will make all the circumstances to trample over you. But now, you have crossed over. You have crossed over to the side of Christ. And on the side of Christ, you have eternal life and you have victorious life. John chapter 8. And I'm reading from verse 30. John chapter 8. Reading from verse 30. As he spake these words, many believed on him. I can tell you are believing on him right now. And the moment you believe on him, it doesn't wait until you stand up. It doesn't wait until you even begin to shout. It doesn't wait until you begin to act anything. As he spake these words, many believed on him then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him if he continue in my word then are ye my disciples indeed if he continue in my word then are ye my disciples indeed everybody wants to continue enjoying victory do you like to go back to defeat do you like to go back to sickness do you like to go back to weakness wants to taste eternal life the life of god in man it's so sweet trusting jesus it's so wonderful believing in jesus you just want to continue and that continuity pronounces you as a disciple of Christ. Verse 32. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. And ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Amen. We're not hearing the truth just to hear. We're not learning the truth just to learn. The truth comes into your heart, comes into your life, enters your brain, enters your life, and that truth sets you free. I said that truth sets you free. Look at verse 36. 
if the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Ye shall be free indeed. How free will you be? I said, how free will you be? You know, it's like somebody had been in the prison, caged, confined, restricted. He has brain, he cannot use it. He has ideas, he cannot put them forth. He has energy and strength. He cannot spread his wings and be at liberty, caged, confined, limited, restrained, and he was so much restricted, he didn't know what he would do. And then somebody having the key. Jesus has the key to your life. And he opens the cage. And he gets him out of the prison. Now, the strength he couldn't use before is free. He can use that strength. The brain he couldn't exercise before is free. He can exercise that brain. And now somebody looks at him and he says, I heard he came out of the prison. But now I see him in action. He is free indeed. Somebody will look at you and he said, I knew him before. Even after I was saved, I knew him. After he was a member of that church, I knew him. I knew her. As I look at her now, the joy, the happiness, the expression, the freedom, the power, the victory, the authority, the triumph, and the result of his life. He doesn't even have to tell me, I know he is free indeed. You are free indeed in Jesus' name. You are free from sin. You are free from sickness. You are free from Satan. You are free from evil spirits. You are free from any circumstance that will bind your life in Jesus' name. You knew the good to do. And you knew the mountain to climb. But there was no strength, there was no power. All your initiative has been taken away. You are bound. Your bonds are loosed. Your yokes are broken. I am free. I'm saying it for you. I am free. And your freedom, everybody will see. Look at Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Outside Christ Jesus, the devil can easily grab anybody outside Christ and steal his joy and kill his initiative. And destroy its prospect. But now you run into Christ Jesus. He is for you. And you are in him. And the devil cannot come inside Christ there. And give you condemnation. And give you damnation. You are free from all that. There is therefore now no condemnation. To them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. What does that mean? You see, as we walk, it's not the legs or the feet walking by themselves. There is something on the inside. 
that instructs, influences the legs. Go this way, go this way, go this way. Before we came to Christ, all that controls us, all that influences us, is something inside this body, inside this flesh. And the flesh has so tainted that personality on the inside. That, that personality on the inside was referred to as the flesh. Because that inner personality was conducted by the flesh, controlled by the flesh, influenced by the flesh, stained by the flesh. And according to the dictates of that personality, 100% controlled by the flesh, according to its dictates, you are walking, you are talking, you are moving, you are planning, you are doing everything. But now, I said, but now, I said, but now, the Holy Spirit has come to take over. And then he tells the personality inside, you will not now be controlled, conducted, influenced, infiltrated by your flesh. And he makes the flesh to step aside. And now as he takes over our lives, all the condemnation is gone. All the guilt is gone. All the past life is gone. And the Holy Spirit is in charge. And so he now influences your inner personality. He now controls your inner personality. And he now infiltrates every part of your inward man. And you now talk and you act and you pray and you demand by the power, by the influence of the Holy Spirit and you are free. Verse 2, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus Stop there right there for a moment. When the Holy Ghost comes in, he sets up a law in your life. He sets up a rule in your life. And it is like the law of gravity that whether you like it or not, you throw something up, what will happen? It will come down. And so, the Spirit of God has now set up a law in your life. Remember now, He controls you. He guides you. He teaches you. He instructs you. And He set up a law. And it's a law of freedom. He puts a mark, although invisible to man, that mark is visible to God. That mark is visible even to Satan. He puts a mark on you and says, This belongs to God. This is free. No one should bring him under bondage anymore. Thank God you are free. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Sin cannot just come in anyhow and say, you are my property. Before you even talk, the Holy Ghost will say, no, don't say that again. It's not your property. I have set a mark over him. And then the law of death, death running and looking for a victim. And he wants to come to you. The Holy Ghost will stop that death before it comes to you. Because you are now God's property. Look at that verse 2 again. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free. 
from the law of sin and death. For what the law, that's the law of Moses, could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, might be fulfilled in me. Why is your voice so weak this morning? That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. I am free. Is anybody free over there? Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 1. Stand fast. Therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. Stand therefore. Stand therefore. You know, when you are bound, bowed down, subjected to the power of the enemy, when you are controlled by the power on earth, there was a way you were bowed down and you couldn't look up. And you were walking bowed down. You couldn't see the future. You couldn't see your front. It's like the spirit of infirmity bowed you down like that. But Christ has now loosed you. And he says, now that you are loosed, now that you are set free, now that there is no iota, the minutest detail of the power of Satan controlling you anymore, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free. And be not entangled again to the yoke of bondage. Are you free? I said, are you free? How free are you? I said, how free are you? 100% free indeed in Jesus' name. Number one, eternal life in Christ. Number two, victorious life through Christ. Number three, abundant life in Christ. Abundant life in Christ. What do I have? What do you have? John chapter 10. Reading from verse 10. Before I read the verse, open the verse. You add some material things at home. And now you need part of that. And you go there and you search. Lo and behold, the thing is almost finished. And you're wondering, when did all this come to this low level? I almost cannot get anything. And then you check up from some people around and they say actually we discovered that the doors were left open and some strange fellows they have been coming without our knowing and they are taking things away one by one until it has come to this level and what remains cannot even serve the purpose that's what the devil does. You've got grace. You've got love. You've got faith. You've got power. You've got confidence. You've got strength. You've got ability. 
you've got a face that knows no impossibility. But the door was open. That is strange personality. While you were up and active the other day, and you said, let come whatever. I can take on anything now. The faith, the grace, the power, the strength was at a high level. But now, today, we come to that same person. And the mountain is said, I can take on any mountain. We say, look at this hill. He looks for the faith. He looks for the strength. He looks for the power. Something has happened. Look at verse 10. The thief comes not. The thief does not make announcement. The thief does not place any advertisement. I'm coming, I'm coming to steal, to kill, to destroy. He came and had been taken away little by little. And almost no strength remains now. But the Lord said, I know what has happened. I am come. He has come. Everything I lost, I'm going to regain. I'm waiting for you to say it for yourself. Confidence, you regain. Faith, you regain. Health, you will regain. Power, you will regain. Supply, you will regain. And ability, you will regain. Jesus said, I am come. I am come. Have you noticed, have you read it in the papers? Some elements were operating somewhere. And they were stealing things, stealing things putting them into a particular van. And somebody secretly alerted the law enforcement agents, soldiers, police, armed to the teeth. And as they alerted them, while the people were still taking this and putting it into their van, taking that and putting it to their van, a captain came with army of soldiers and policemen fully armed with him. And they began to shoot. And those people who were stealing and killing and destroying, they knew a greater power has come. They leave their van. They leave all the things they have stolen. They run away. You didn't want them to run away. They run away. And then the police and the army, they took all those things and they give you back everything those people have taken. They were not able to catch away. I am come. Christ has come. The Savior has come. The Redeemer has come. The Healer has come. He has come to restore everything you lost in Jesus' name. I am come that they might have life. Your time has come. Eternal life you have. Victorious life you have. Triumphant life you have. Abundant life you have. Healthy life. Healthy life. You are not going to be living on the brink of death. I might die today. I might die tomorrow. God forbid in Jesus' name. Powerful life. Strong life. Active life. Abundant life has come in Jesus' name. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it. 
that they might have it, that they might have it more abundantly. Amen. Amen. You know, in some places they will say, shout, hallelujah, seven times. At other times, they'll say, shout, hallelujah, 14 times. Shout, hallelujah, 21 times. Now, don't shout because I'm still preaching, but you will shout, amen, 21 times. Yeah. Over and over and over, amen in your life in Jesus' name. My weakness is gone. I said my weakness is gone. My sickness is gone. My impotence is gone. Impossibilities are gone from your life. Because in Ephesians chapter 3, Ephesians chapter 3, reading from verse 20, Now unto him that is able, this morning, is the morning of supernatural ability. Now unto him that is able, able to do, able to do, able to do. There is nothing you ask him this morning that he will not do. Now unto him that's able to do exceeding, abundantly, above, look at that, all that we ask or see according to the power that walketh in Jerusalem, in Capernaum, in Bethel, according to the power that walketh in the camp, where? Where? I said where? There is an unbeatable power walking in you this morning. Unrestrained power working in you this morning. According to the power that works in us. That power will take away every work of the devil. Unto him the glory in the church. By Christ Jesus throughout all ages world without end. We're going to pray now, but there's a verse I wanted to underline. And after this meeting, every time, try and read it over and over and over and over. Then in the evening, before you sleep, read it over and over and over. Then every day, read it over and over and over. Isaiah chapter 33. Isaiah chapter 33. I'm reading from verse 24. And the inhabitant shall not say, I am sick. The people that dwell therein shall be forgiven their iniquity. All the people sitting or standing there, all the people present with us, where we're hearing the message, it promises us every sin will be forgiven. And it promises us now, you will not continue going about saying, I am sick, I am sick, I am sick. Now you will say, I am well. You will say, I am made whole. You will say, I am healed. You will say, I am strong. You will say, my prayers are answered. The inhabitants of the land shall not say, I am sick. The people that dwell therein shall be forgiven their iniquity. Grace is abundant this morning. Love is abundant this morning. And the mercy is abundant this morning. Answer to your prayer abundant this morning. It is yours. Why don't you rise up 
it is yours. Why don't you tell the Lord, it is mine, it is mine. Love abundant, yours. Mercy abundant, yours. Grace abundant, yours. Goodness abundant, yours. And it's free, and it's free, as free as the air you breathe. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, shall be saved and delivered and healed and set free. Open your mouth and tell the Lord. There's assurance in every heart. It will answer every prayer. Everything you are asking is abundant, abundantly available, will be abundantly given. Forgiveness, abundantly given. I receive. Mercy, abundantly bestowed. I receive. Victory, abundantly bestowed, I receive. Nobody will be denied. Everyone will be answered. Just ask, Lord, grant me forgiveness, he will. Lord, Grant me the gift of your salvation. He will. Grant me strength. He will. Give me healing. He will. Power to overcome. He will abundantly, abundantly. Move this mountain in my life, in my family. He will. Every prayer will be abundantly answered this morning. Restore my lost vision, he will abundantly. Restore my spiritual energy and power, he will abundantly. Make me strong. I don't appreciate this kind of weakness I have. In my soul, in my spirit, in my body, make me strong. He will abundantly. Bring power in my life. He will abundantly. Make your grace super abundant. Sufficient, overflowing in my life, he will abundantly. Answer my prayer, he will abundantly. In Jesus' name we pray. I have received. I have received. Where are you if you have received? 
Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you because of what you have for every one of us. Eternal life, everlasting life. I pray, O oh Lord, for everyone who has confessed his or her sins. Turn away from sin and turn to you, Jesus, as Savior. Bring your salvation to everyone in Jesus' name. Grant everyone that eternal life. Grant everyone that assurance of everlasting life. Confirm each in every heart, Lord, in Jesus' name. And now give everyone the power to go and live in victory. Let the Holy Spirit live big in every life in Jesus' name. The unconquerable Christ to take his position in every heart in Jesus' name. Victory all the way. In every trial, victory. In every temptation, victory. In at every crossroad, victory. The victory your children did eat and before, Lord, give unto them in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, the soul seek, heal them. You promise to answer every prayer. The prayer of the sick, asking for healing, even if they have asked with a trembling voice, and they were not very sure and standing firm. In your mercy, which is abundant, in your love, which is abundant, in your grace, which is abundant, answer everyone in Jesus' name. Heal every sickness. Move every mountain. Destroy all the works of the devil. Break every yoke. Confirm it in every life in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, I pray that none of your children will slip back into defeat anymore. Victory. Victory. Power. Conquering spirit. Plant in everyone in Jesus' name. Now, abundance in every life. Abundant supply. Abundant life. Abundant joy. Abundant uh, situation. Everything you give them, make it abundant in Jesus' name. The power that will never run dry. The supply that will never run dry. The joy that will never run dry. And the testimony that will not run stale in Jesus' name. Eternal life. Victorious life. Abundant life. Confirm it for everyone. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.